So how do you break in a new shotgun? Is that even a thing? Well, it's not what you think. George back here with the New Hunters Guide, the YouTube channel, and a very informative podcast helping new hunters get started and bringing new insights to all hunters. And today we are talking about breaking in a shotgun. Now this question first came up when I was doing a video talking about whether or not ported choke tubes reduce recoil versus non-ported choke tubes. And I'll link to that at the end of this video, but the question really hit me when I was in a gun shop. And I was looking at different turkey and water foul ammo to buy in order to do test videos for you guys see if we could do some pattern and ballistics gel testing for some different things and while I was there perusing the ammo a guy came up next to me and I overheard a conversation and he was buying a brand new shotgun that day and had been advised by the salesperson that he should get a box of high brass shells and run those through his brand new shotgun in order to break it in and he was trying to find the cheapest high brass loads that he could get to break in his new shotgun. Now when I heard that, I was like, what? Shotgun break in? High brass shells? I was like, what are you talking about? But I was good, I kept my mouth shut, I didn't say anything, it wasn't my business. And the salesperson there at that gun shop was relatively reputable. I had some faith in him. So I thought, okay, what are they talking about? I need to find out more about this. Is this really a thing? What does this mean? So I launched out and did a whole bunch of research. I went through everything I could find online and I found a whole bunch of stuff on forums, Facebook groups, the occasional blog post, but it was all basically just opinion jockeying. Everybody had their opinion and they were willing to fight to the death for it, but none of it was really based on anything. I did find a few highly credible YouTubers who had been gunsmiths and had worked in armories and things like that, and they gave their opinion on the subject. And while I do value their opinion on the subject, they weren't quoting or citing anything other than their own opinions. They really had nothing else to say other than this is what I think about the subject. So being a professionally trained researcher with a PhD, that was not quite good enough for me to have a definitive answer to this subject. I wanted to know more. I wanted to have some certainty on whether or not all these opinions and all these break-in procedures and processes really meant something. But I could find no way to confirm or to invalidate any of the opinions and processes I was finding, so I decided I needed to come up with something. So what I decided was the only people who could really know for sure and tell us for sure what the break-in process for a new shotgun should be are the people that make them. So I decided I was going to contact shotgun manufacturers. Now who did I contact? Well, I put together a quick list of everybody I could think up off the top of my head that makes hunting shotguns, semi-automatics, and pump action shotguns for the US hunting market. And I came up with a short list of 12 companies. Now this list is not exhaustive. I did not spend hours of research. I am sure there are more companies out there that make shotguns for the US hunting market. But these were the top 12 I could think up. And I'm pretty sure they account for at least 80 to 90% of the hunting shotguns that are on the market today. So let's take a look at this list. So I reached out to Benelli, Beretta, Browning, CZ, Franke, Mossberg, Remington, Ruger, Savage, Stoger, Weatherby, and Winchester. Again, not everybody, but definitely the vast majority of people making hunting shotguns for the US market in both semi-automatic and pump action. And a couple things that I learned from doing this research. One, everybody grouped in green, they are owned by the same company, as well as those grouped in blue, also owned by the same company. So those two blocks, they returned pretty much the same answers. Now I reached out to everyone first in writing, and some companies responded in immediately, like Savage and Mossberg. I think within 24 hours they responded. Others responded over the course of a couple days. Some I had to follow up with multiple times. Some I had to call, I sent chat messages, some took weeks. The longest one took, I think, almost two months to finally get a hold of, and I'm not gonna name any names, Beretta. 
But finally, I got all of the information and I asked all of these companies two very specific questions. All right, number one, I asked them, what is your recommended break-in process for your shotguns? Number two, is there any difference between semi-automatic shotguns and pump action shotguns for your break-in process? And guys, I was very surprised with the answers and the responses that I got from these companies. It was not the way I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna show you guys the answers for each and every one of these companies, as well as some specific notes about what they said. But at the end here, we're gonna have to put some pieces together in order to synthesize what I think is an appropriate across the board answer. It is not going to be as obvious as you might think or hope. All right, first up on the list, Benelli. Their official company policy is that there is no break-in procedure for their shotguns and of course no difference between semi-automatic and pump action shotguns. However, the tech that responded to my inquiry gave a personal opinion on the subject and he recommends shooting 100 shells of varying lengths, whatever that shotgun can shoot, whether it's two and three quarter, three inch or three and a half in order to break in the shotgun. He says that he would not hold a shotgun too accountable for its performance until after you put 100 shells through it. So I found it interesting that the company has no official break in procedure, however the gun tech has his own. Number two, Beretta. They did say they have an official break-in process and that is that you should shoot 150 to 200 higher loads and this will help the gun cycle lighter loads more reliably. Now I asked what higher loads means and they didn't really have a great answer for me. They started trying to quote something having to do with Sammy specs, but basically they said loads that have more recoil. They don't want to say high brass, but they said higher loads. So they want you to break in your shotgun shooting 150 to 200 higher loads before you can expect reasonable cycling performance. So I said, well, what if it's a turkey shotgun and I will never fire that many loads through the turkey shotgun. And they said that with high power turkey loads, it shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. The break in process just helps the gun to be able to cycle lighter loads easier. Number three on the list, Browning. They said no, no recommended break in process and no difference between auto loaders and pumps. CZ, they said no, no break in process whatsoever. Franke, who had Benelli respond as their customer service people. They said, no, they do not have an official company break-in process. However, the gun tech that time said he recommends 200 shells of varying lengths to break in the shotgun. Mossberg said, no, we have no break-in process of any kind for any of our guns. The guns work fine right out of the box. Remington, again, no, no break-in process. Just clean it and use it. Ruger, nope, no break-in process for anything other than normal cleaning. Savage, they said, nope, no break-in process. The guns work fine right out of the box. Stoger said, no company break-in process, no official process, but that gun tech also recommended 200 shells of varying length. Again, Stoger was answered by Benelli customer service. Weatherby said, yes. They recommend 100 shells for a break-in process for all of their guns, both auto loaders and pumps. And then Winchester came out and they said, nope, no break-in process, just clean the gun and use it. All right, so what are we supposed to do with this information? How do we synthesize it? Well, I'm gonna tell you guys, but first I need to let you know, none of these companies are sponsoring this video. Nobody is. But I'd ask you to please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button to help this video reach more people. And if you like videos like this and reviews, field tests, kicking the tires on assumptions, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. All right, so what does it all mean? Are we to believe that companies like Beretta and Weatherby make inferior shotguns that need a special break-in process? Hmm, I don't know about that. Are we to believe that other companies just make superior shotguns that need no break-in? Eh, I'm not sure about that either. Is there something in the marketing that these companies have just found it's better to say, hey, there is no break-in process. Our guns just work out of the box. Well, that is good marketing. 
Is it the truth or not? I really have no idea. So what are we supposed to do with these mixed signals and mixed messages from different companies? And some are very high profile companies. How do we handle this? Well guys, I think I have the answer on this one. The bottom line is this. If you get a new shotgun, you need to get used to that shotgun. Now going and buying boxes of shells and going out to the range and just shooting them into the dirt is a complete and total useless waste of money. Do not do that. That is just stupid. All right, but we should shoot these guns before we hunt with them. So I recommend if you buy a new shotgun, whatever kind of shotgun it is, take it to the range and go do a round of sporting clays. That's usually a 20 position course with 100 clay birds. You're gonna get a good feel for that shotgun. How does it balance? How does it swing? How does it hit you? Where does it shoot? Does it go high, low, left, right? Are you holding it right? Try some different choke tubes. Then take it to the range and pattern test whatever loads you actually plan to hunt with, with the choke you plan to use, see how it does on paper, and make sure that it cycles those shells effectively. These are just things that any and every responsible hunter should do with any new shotgun that they get. One, to make sure that it works right, that it fits them good, that they're used to it and can hunt effectively with it, and that it puts the pattern where they need it for the game that they're hunting. And if you do something like that, you will have broken in the shotgun whether or not any broken process is needed or not. But don't go out and just shoot shells into the ground to break in a gun, all right? Get some practice. You don't have sporting clay, shoot some traps, shoot some skeet, shoot something that's going to give you practice. I don't care if it's a turkey gun, I don't care if it's a break action single shot, take that gun to the range, shoot around a sporting clays, and it will pay dividends to help you get used to that gun and to take more game in the woods. Now what about rifle break-ins? Well that is the horse of a different color. And to see my video on that, why don't you go ahead and click right here. And to see if ported choke tubes reduce shotgun recoil, check out this video right here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Till next time, God bless you and go get them in the woods.